fall is right around the corner and let's face it back to school is happening like as we speak across the country so what better uh, rock to make then how about a fun little apple so I made this cute guy saying hi we're doing a little bit of shading on here nothing too complicated perfect for beginners so come watch this tutorial and you'll be able to make these fun little apples of your own to either hide around town or give to your favorite teacher at school. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Also, feel free to leave in the comments below anything you would like me to try to do a tutorial for you as well. I'm always open to new ideas. Okay, for today's rock, I'm gonna kind of go over my edges just a little bit. So I'm going to use some painter's tape. Um, just to kind of hold it down to my surface so I'm not trying to touch it too much on the sides when my sides are wet. So we're just going to put this right here and I can kind of paint out over the edges a little bit. So I've got just some different colors here. Um, I'm going to just get out what I need when I need it um, since I'll have to step away a couple times, let this dry a little bit in the process. So I always get a very little bit amount when you're using these um, thicker acrylic paints. I like them because they last a really long time. Um, they're they're very high quality. They cover really well. So I've just got a very little bit there. Um, I do have water here off to the side. Make sure I get that in so you can see what I'm doing. So I just got my regular brush in the water so the bristles are wet a little bit. I'm gonna go right into that paint and we're going to just base this entire rock with this red. And you can see it, it covers really nice and thick. And that was even with a wet brush. So we're going to go all the way to the edges here with this red because the entire rock is going to be part of our apple. Get all the way to the edge. Oh, I can hear my little doggies here. I should say little. She's pretty big. She came by to be in the video a little bit, I guess. So just like that. Nice, smooth coat here of red. Or apple and then I'm gonna come in here I have the burnt sienna it's kind of like a brown color I just want a little bit of a darkness along the edge so I'm gonna just do a little bit of burnt sienna there I'm just gonna go right back with my same brush I'm gonna kind of try to wipe off a little bit of this excess red and go into that burnt sienna I'm just gonna go along the edge here I'm gonna kind of dab it all the way around first before I start blending so I don't run out completely before I get to the other side. And it's just gonna add a little bit of darkness along the edge, like so. Just when we're all said and done. All the way around like that. Get the brown back out. Got a little bit of this red back on the brush. And we're just gonna blend that edge nicely. There we go. Now we're gonna let this red on our apple dry completely. And then we're gonna come back and start adding in some of our green detail. Um, while this red is still drying, we are gonna go back in. I forgot earlier here real quick. And we're gonna put the little shadow or indentation. We're gonna use that same thing, the burnt sienna. And it's not a big difference in color. It's just enough to create a little bit of a, a shadow. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush for this. I'm gonna get it wet and then kind of dry it off a little bit. But this paint is nice and thick, so you don't wanna go straight paint. You wanna at least have your brush be a little bit wet. So we're gonna find out where do we want this stem to appear. So I'm gonna make, um, you remember when you used to draw birds and they were kind of very wide V shapes? And do something just kind of like that and then fill it in you see that i'll kind of zoom in so it's just kind of a a v and then filled in a very wide v and then we can kind of we'll blend that out just a little bit so we'll get that in there rinse off the brush just gonna create just that little bit of shadow when we add our stem in, see if there's any red left in here that we can kind of wiggle onto our brush. Just enough to kind of pull that 
don't want a hard edge like that on either side. And then they want the tops. Just like that. So you can see that indent when we go in and add the stem. It will really make sense why it's there. And it will give this more of a 3D shape or look. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and let that dry. So you're going to go right back into the uh, burnt sienna color that we use to make the shadow on the edges and where um, the indent on the top is going to be. And we're just going to give a small little half C, not half C, half O, which is a C, <laughs> shape here on the apple. It's just going to be a little spot where the worm's going to come out. And we're going to do the same thing, put on full color. We're going to go right back into some of our leftover red here and just get a little bit on your brush so you can blend out the um, that brown color so it's not just a line on your, and we can start adding on some of our apple details so we're gonna do a stem and we're gonna do a leaf and we're going to do a little worm coming out of our apple so go ahead and make sure your brush is rinsed out really well um, and then we're gonna get some green and we're gonna paint on our stem our top of our apple should be nice and dry by now there we go. I'm going to take this and go ahead and do our stem. And we want a nice little point for where the stem goes in. So I'm going to start at the bottom in that shadow area that we created and pull up and away like so. And we'll start in the same spot and then pull a little bit off to the left and a little bit off to the right just to give it a little bit of thickness towards the tip. And as I said before, you're going to be able to see through the screen slightly. Um, just because we thinned it out a little bit, but it's going to go on so much more smooth. So we'll just make sure we're going to be able to do a second coat. And we're also going to add our worm on here. And you can have them coming out in any direction you like. I like a nice curvy green worm. And you can also make them as thick as you want. So I'm going to kind of thick them up a little bit on this first coat. Now, depending on if you're going to have a saying on here is where you want to place your worm, how close to the edge you want it to be because you're going to want a spot for your little word bubble as well. I'm just going to put a little bit more paint on here and then we'll add a leaf on top and then we're going to let this layer dry a little bit. And we're going to get some green on here and I find to do the leaf sometimes it's easier to start at a point where it's going in and then as you pull away you can press down just slightly. You can see here it down and as you pull away you're going to press down just slightly and it will thicken up that leaf for you and then you can lift and it will kind of come back to a point point. and then we're going to come back and do our second coat so our first coat of green has really dried on here our red is really nice and dry as well so I'm going to go ahead and remove this so that I can kind of get in there while I'm doing my details of my worm here I am going to get myself a little bit more green to add on here. Not a lot again. Always get more. All right, we're going to go in there and we're just going to do a second coat on our worm on top of that red. There we go. He's nice and bright. like that. And we'll do another coat up here on our stem as well. Ooh, a little thick there. Just like that. Okay. Now my little worm, I'm going to give him some uh, big eyes and he's going to be saying, you know, hello or how are you or something cute like that. Um, for that, I am going to just go ahead and grab um, some paint pens. You can definitely do this with brushes. As well, but this will be a little bit quicker. 
so you won't have to wait as long for everything to dry. So first I'm gonna draw my little word bubble here off to the side, like so. We'll fill that in so it's got time to dry. If you've got something longer you want your worm to be saying, you can definitely uh, start him further in the apple on this side so you got more space. And I'm gonna do two giant eyes like so. We gotta let that dry and then we're gonna be back with black to write and give ourselves a little pupils on there. So just another second for that. All right, so I've got my black 1M and it's kind of worn down. It's not quite as pointy as it used to be. I probably need to be getting a new one of these soon, but it's gonna do the job. Let's make sure that it's writing well here. The plain white paper off to the side to make sure that it's going. We're just gonna go in and do two dots for our pupils. Just dab, dab, dab. Same spot, like so. And then we're just gonna write something simple here, um, just so that it uh, fits in our little bubble. Let's see here, so we're just gonna write hi. Looks like my head wasn't in the way for that. And we might be just give them a little smile here as well. Just like that. Super cute. You could make the apples without the worms if you wanted to. But see just that little bit of shading gives it a little bit more of a dimensional look to it. Just that tad bit there in there by the stem. A little bit along these edges. And he's good to go. Perfect, fun little rock for fall. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, let me know in the comments below if there's something that you would like to see me try to paint or do a tutorial for, and we'll be back again here in just another second. Just let it roll on through to another fun rock painting tutorial. Bye.